Hi, my name is Stephanie McMillan, and I am here today to talk to you about the November 8th general election ballot. I would like to discuss some information that will help you mark your ballot properly in order to ensure that the vote or votes you cast are tabulated correctly. To ensure that the votes you cast are properly counted by the tabulator, you need to completely darken the oval that is opposite your choice. If you notice on the ballot, to the right of each candidate or proposal is an oval. To vote for that candidate or proposal, you must completely darken that oval. Please only use blue or black ink and do not circle the candidate name or make a check mark next to that person's name thinking that that is a way to cast your vote. Again, to ensure that your vote for that candidate or proposal is properly counted by the tabulator, you must completely darken that oval that is to the right of that candidate or proposal. Another thing you should look for on the ballot is to check for how many positions are available for each office. You'll notice under the heading of each office, whether it's partisan or nonpartisan, there's a limit to the number of seats that are available to select. Please ensure that you do not overvote your ballot. So again, please ensure that you read under each heading how many votes you can cast for that particular office. There are three sections of the ballot that I would like to point out for you. The first section is the partisan section. That section of the ballot lists the offices and candidates that have a political party affiliation. The second part of that ballot is the nonpartisan section. This section of the ballot lists the offices and candidates that do not have a political party affiliation. And thirdly, we have the proposal section. This section of the ballot contains local proposals that do not have political party affiliation and they do require a yes or no vote. I would like to also point out to you that this ballot for the November general election is a two-sided ballot. Please ensure to review both sides of that ballot in order to properly cast a vote for the offices or proposals of your choosing. Another option you do have is for write-in candidates. If you choose to vote for a write-in candidate, and this is an individual whose name is not already printed on the ballot, but they have officially filed as a write-in candidate, you would do this by writing in their name on the line at the bottom of each office and completely filling in the oval to the right of that person's name. Another option you have in November is to cast a straight ticket, a split ticket, or a mixed ticket. A straight ticket is to cast a vote for a political party of your choosing. By doing this, you will automatically be giving a vote to all of the candidates under the partisan section that is represented by the political party that you selected. If you are okay with this, that is all that you have to do for the partisan section. Another option you have is a split ticket. That means that if you vote for a political party through the straight party ticket option, you also have the choice of selecting a member of an opposite party affiliation and you can cast a vote for that person under that office even though you have also cast a straight party ticket. And finally, there is the mixed ticket option. That is voting for any candidate regardless of their political party or even nonpartisanship individually. So you will fill in the oval for each candidate under each office that you choose to participate in individually throughout the ballot. I would like to point out that there are a couple of options available to voters to assist them in this voting process. One is a sample ballot. 
This ballot is the exact same ballot that you would be issued through the absentee voter process or if you were to come to your precinct on election day. This ballot is available to you in order to review ahead of time and to mark that ballot as a cheat sheet in which you can bring with you on election day. This ballot can be found at www.michigan.gov forward slash vote. This website will allow you to confirm that you are a registered voter, tell you where your precinct is located, and give you an option to see a sample ballot. Again, this ballot can be printed off, reviewed at your leisure, and marked as a cheat sheet to bring with you to the precinct. You cannot tabulate this ballot, but you can use it to help you properly mark your official ballot when you get to the precinct. And finally, one more option for our voters is that if we have voters who require special accommodations, we have the ability to assist you in a precinct. We will take an election worker of the Republican and Democratic Party and they will collectively assist you in a voting booth if asked for assistance. Another option to you is that you can bring an individual of your choosing to assist you on election day in the voting booth. The only individual that cannot participate in this assistance process with you is an employer or agent of your employer or an officer or agent of a union to which you belong. Other than that, please feel free to bring assistance if you have a disability, if there is a language barrier, if you are blind or unable to read or write, these are all reasons in which you can ask for assistance or bring someone with you to the polls to assist you. Again, these options are available to assist you as a voter and to ensure that on election day, you have a positive voting experience. For additional information on the November 8th general election, please go to our election webpage at www.grcity.us forward slash elections or contact your clerk's office at 456-3010. Thank you.